debating whether or not to finally retire. I've been thinking about it for a little while and I'm kind of torn between whether to fully retire, semi-retire, stay doing what I'm doing. And this last week has really kind of given me some food for thought. So I thought in this video, I would just go through some of my thought processes, what happened last week and how that's impacted the decisions that I'm making. I did some filming last week and I thought I'd bring it to you in this vlog. So last Thursday, I had to deliver a bit of work for a client. I was delivering a 90 minute training session to a financial business down in the center of London, which meant that I had to get up reasonably early, drive to the train station, which for me is about 40 minutes, park up, grab a train to London, which is around about an hour, an hour and a half, depending on which train you get. Well, I found my seat in first class. It's completely empty on this train, although we are about 15 minutes early for the train departing. There's just nobody else in here. Um, so I put myself onto first class just so I've got a bit more peace and quiet so I can work on the way down to London. Not so bothered about coming back because I'll just chill my headphones on, but I find it a bit of a bustle in the normal carriage if you're trying to work. Um, yeah, it's just very, very quiet. So some of you might remember that I never, about a month ago, I committed to losing some weight. Put on a lot of weight since I gave up my job full time and started working for myself a bit bouncy on this train. And I started a weight loss plan a month ago. I'm very happy to say I'm nearly a stone down already. Just over uh, just sorry, just under 13 pounds lost so far. Um, I've definitely got a, a lot of pounds to go but I'm actually enjoying it quite a lot more than I thought of them because it is a based on meal replacements which always been a little bit anti. But I have to say, it's, I don't, I've not felt hungry, the weight is easily coming off, um, I've not felt my energy dip, if anything quite the opposite. I still do eat an ordinary meal every day, I don't think I can do without that. But yeah, everything's doing well. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, <coughs> I'll put a link somewhere up here to the video where I was talking about the fact that my weight got up but I wasn't very happy with it. Um, I also did a video a couple of months ago about the fact that I have arthritis now in my knees or the joys of getting older um, and my weight wasn't helping with that and actually even just losing that, uh, that st first stone has made such a difference to my knees. When I'm dancing, they don't hurt anywhere near as much as they did. Um, it's made a significant difference. I'm hoping if I can get another couple of stone off, my knees will do a lot better because I really want to start doing more walking, more hiking, and just not feeling like I can't do things because it's too painful. So yeah, all good on the diet front. Then I had to navigate my way across London on the tube to get to the venue, deliver a session for 90 minutes, and then come all of the way back on the train back home. And I have to say, in the um, you know, in years gone by, I'd have found that pretty easy. But now it drains me. It absolutely drains me. And I didn't really have an awful lot of time to look around London. I really didn't have loads of time, so I couldn't take much advantage of the sightseeing opportunities. But I did meet a few cute little animals along the way, especially these gorgeous elephants and a couple of very cute little motor scooterers. So I've got about 15 minutes until I have to meet up with a colleague and we start our training at half past 12. It's now quarter two, so I'm just grabbing a quick coffee before I head over to the officers and uh, meet the delegates.
I did also get the chance to have a quick look around Spitalfields Market, but then it was time to head back to the station and grab my train home. Well, that all went really, really well. I only had a very small turnout, but actually sometimes that's better because when it's a small group, you get to have more conversations. Just heading back to the tube to get my train back home. I always forget just how tiring coming to London is. Um, I'm a country girl <laughs> and uh, coming into the city just always feels a bit too much hustle and bustle really. I do enjoy it but God, it's exhausting, exhausting. And British Rail are so rubbish, they don't give you any other alternatives. So now I've got to go and find the ticket office and try and try and get a different train. Oh, so annoying. Home. I've got about a 40 minute drive now. The train was 45 minutes late. The, uh, let's just say the journey there, first class, was somewhat calmer than the journey back. Very crowded carriage, lots of people standing around, a lot of babies crying. <laughs> Thank goodness for headphones. But um, yeah, I'll be glad to get back home sit down, grab a cup of tea and just chill out and watch a bit of TV with Mark. It's fair to say I was absolutely shattered by the time that I got home. Now on Friday I got to meet up with a friend and an ex-client for brunch and then I was so wiped out from the day before it was pretty much a chill out day. I did some nice retail therapy looking around the shops after we'd had brunch. And then I headed back home, did a little bit of relaxing before getting dressed up, ready to go to our dance class on Friday night. Um, and that was a nice way to round off the weekend. That's exactly what I really wanted to be doing. Just chilling, brunch with a friend, going dancing with Mark. Everything felt really lovely. Saturday I had arranged to meet another business friend because I'd offered to help her to plan out some training that she's putting together. She's also in the corporate training world and she's trying to put together a program similar to something I've done in the past. So we literally spent about five hours together on Saturday with notepads and post-it notes and coloured pens plotting out a, a training program but it was all good it was all good I enjoyed doing that sort of thing and she did stand me lunch so all was good in the evening I had the opportunity to go and take my granddaughter to a local bonfire night celebration now the other day I was chatting to fellow creator Alexa Saranoia who we were organizing a live stream and I said oh that'll be bonfire day but she's American and didn't have a clue what I was talking about so let me just take a moment to tell you all about bonfire night so Bonfire Night, also known as Guy Fawkes in the UK, is a celebration that we have every year on the on or around the 5th of November. So Bonfire Night is actually the 5th of, no 5th of November, but generally the closest weekend to the 5th. We have fireworks and celebrations and it all started when a group of rebels in I think it was 1605 had to plot to overthrow our government, murder our king and blow up the Houses of Parliament. So this bunch of revolting men put gunpowder underneath the Houses of Parliament with the intention of blowing it up and they put one of the gang on lookout and his name 
was Guy Fawkes. Now, he only had one job keep lookout and he obviously didn't do a very good job of it because he got caught the plot was unearthed and they were all tried for treason and Guy Fawkes the incompetent lookout was executed as a traitor and for some reason we celebrate that in the UK 400 years later except now we celebrate with hot dogs and fireworks and beer tents and it's all lots and lots of fun so we took my granddaughter to the fireworks celebrations for Guy Fawkes or bonfire night and it was just so lovely to get to spend time with the family and to enjoy the celebrations and listen to all the oohs and ahs as all the fireworks went off and that leads me to Sunday now Sunday I had a private coaching client for two hours on Sunday morning I don't normally take clients at the weekend uh, but because I like this client very very much and it fits with her I, I was quite happy to do that so we had a couple of hours of coaching, me working on Sunday before Mark and I headed out to view a potential camper van because we want to do camper vanning. As it happened, it wasn't right for us, but it was lovely to just go and have a look at a camper van and just think about all of the adventures that we want to have when we find the right van. We're still looking. And what all of that did really was leave me in a little bit of a quandary. I definitely realised that I do not want to be doing face-to-face -face training, especially not if I have to take a whole day out to do that. And I've got a train journey and commuting and noisy, loud, crowded trains. I was exhausted. I could do it when I was younger and I probably really enjoyed it when I was younger. I definitely don't enjoy it now. I also, as much as I really enjoyed supporting my friend on Saturday with her business plans and I absolutely love the client work that I do, I really want to have, I want to prioritise time with the family over work. I did a video last week where I talked about quitting my job at the age of 52 and I talked about the fact that I didn't have a plan and I got quite a lot of pushback and negative comments in in the comments saying basically so what you're saying is you just have to get yourself a good husband and you'll be sorted and to an extent you know they're not wrong. I do have a really supportive husband and we are in a position where financially I was able to make that jump but I think it triggered me a little bit because the, the implication from what I was hearing in the comments was I was a scrounger and you know just taking advantage of the the privilege of having a husband who could financially support me and it got my back up a little bit because I've worked full-time since I was 16 years old and I've worked hard I've brought up two kids some of that time on my own because my husband was in the military and a lot of the time he, he lived away and yes I was supported when I gave up my job I was fortunate but it didn't take me very long to start paying my way again and and I think that's part of the the decision process now to semi-retire or to retire is I don't like and I'm not used to not paying my way I'm not used to being fully dependent on somebody else for their financial support I don't like it you know I, I want to be able to pay my way so that's another consideration that I've got here and you know I'm not going to let the comments bother me because I know that we're in a partnership our marriage is a partnership we support each other and yes I did have his support and his financial support to allow me to quit my nine to five job and start my business but I'm nearly 60 and I think now you know it's 
it's time, I think it's okay, it's time for me to start to wind things down. And I definitely have realised as well, as much as I don't want to be going and doing a lot of the in-person stuff, I don't want to be doing the corporate work really anymore because that's where it's really quite demanding. I just, I want to continue to grow this YouTube channel if I can monetize this and make um, a small amount of um, income from YouTube, that would be brilliant. Um, I don't need it to be huge, but a little bit of income from YouTube would be really useful. And also from private clients. So I have no intention of not coaching my private clients anymore. That's definitely something I want to do. But I do realise I have to change my business model if I want to make this work. We want to get the camper van. I want to be able to work almost like a digital nomad. I want to be able to have my client calls. All of my coaching clients are digital. They're all are virtual, I mean. They're all, you know, we don't meet in person. We, we meet online. So I can do that from anywhere as long as I've got an internet connection. So I want the freedom to be able to do that. So I, I guess the decisions that I'm making, uh, they're not set in stone yet, but they are becoming much, much clearer. I had an hour long conversation with my lovely accountant, Lucy, earlier today, and I've made the, the decision to close my limited company. And I will still continue to run my business but I'll run it as a sole trader, sole proprietor, uh, as a self-employed person, not as a limited company. So that's a decision I have taken. That's in process. The company is closing. That feels that feels real. <laughs> just I hope you enjoyed just a little bit of a look at a few days in the life of a 59 year old solopreneur, if you like that word, I don't really like that word. And the decisions maybe that we have to come to when we're on that edge around, do I retire? Do I not? Do I fully retire? Do I semi-retire? It's they're, they're big decisions. They're big decisions and there's lots of implications. And I'm not sure that I can do what I've done in the past, which is to take a snap decision and just go for it. I feel like this one, I have to take a little bit more time over and there's you know more things to consider but every week week on week i'm pushed and drawn more and more towards just winding things down a little so if you are still around thank you very much for staying with me and i will talk to you soon take care